Hello friends and welcome back to Creeps and Creeps. I'm your host Cece Delaney and today we are going to be discussing the case of Judith Eva Barcy. She was the little girl who I was obsessed with as a kid in so many different movies, mainly one that we're going to talk about in a minute. But hello, hi, if you're new here, thank you so much for joining me. If you're old here, thanks for coming back. If you're watching from YouTube, you'll notice we have a new setup. It's not going to stay this way, that's for sure. But for now, this is going to be the general setup. We're going to add and subtract some things as I deem them worthy or unworthy of camera viewing. If you do like this episode by the end and you feel like you want to subscribe that'd be super cool I would not be mad at that but otherwise let's just go ahead and pop into the content of the day so like I said we're talking about Judith Eva Barcy who was born June 6 1978 in Los Angeles California she was the only daughter of Joseph Estevan Barcy and Maria Barcy who were both Hungarian immigrants who fled during the Soviet occupation in Hungary now, they kind of had two very different upbringings. So Maria was from a more safe, rural side of town. And you could kind of say that Joseph was from the other side of the tracks. He was from uh, like the rougher, more industrial area and was walking around without a mom, which I guess back in that time was seen as more of like a defect on your end, not the mom who abandoned you. Like it's the kid's fault, basically. Both Maria and Joseph fled at the same time. So they both wound up in America around the same time. And when they did end up meeting, it's because Maria was working in a bar and Joseph just so happened to come in fairly frequently. And when he would pay, he would tip with $100 bills and really just like flex on these hoes. And she was like, oh, daddy, hello. And she wanted to be with him. But it was kind of rude because later on in their relationship, like they would get in bite fights. And when they would fight, she would throw the you're a bastard card at him, which was really emasculating. And he did not respond in the best of ways to that and would actually verbally and physically abuse her in return. Basically, they were just very abusive to one another. And Joe seemed to have a history of violence. Like he was not a mild mannered individual. And for example, he was born from Hungary. Like he is straight out of Hungary in America. And people would make fun of his accent or even just be like, ah, that's a cool accent and imitate it. And he would pop off. That was a big no-no from him. That was his boundary and people really liked to cross his boundary. So he'd pop off and start swinging and get in fights pretty frequently. By the time Judith came along, Maria had gotten a taste of the American dream and really wanted to get everything that she could out of America, like squeeze the whole experience out. Meanwhile, Joseph was content just being salt of the earth, work for himself type of fellow and didn't really want to ride the coattails of his daughter because again, could be seen as emasculating. Poor Judith pretty much went from womb to acting classes because Maria was kind of living out her fantasy of being a starlet through Judith. It's very common. Parents see one talent in their kid and they say, perfect, Hollywood, here's my sweet little angel. Make her a star. Hey. I want to be famous. But I mean, the hard work paid off for Maria because just at age five, at a random ice skating rink, there were scouts that were shooting a commercial just nearby and they just so happened to see Judith skating around and they said, that one right there, that's our new Hollywood baby. And so they got her little butt cheeks signed and she was on and popping. It was off to the races for her. She also kind of peaked at about three feet tall. Like she was perpetually the size of a five-year-old. And so she was easily mistaken as a five-year-old, even when she's eight, nine, and 10, which worked in her favor because she was a lot easier to direct when she's eight, nine, and 10. It's easier to tell a 10-year-old what to do than it is a five-year-old who's going to be like, oh my God, butterflies. Eee. And you get like maybe a five minute scene out of them before they're pieced the hell out doing whatever the hell five-year-olds do. For some reason, her mom didn't like that and ended up trying to give her growth hormones at UCLA in order to spur growth, but it never really ended up taking. In my opinion, I don't really understand it because it seems like it's more lucrative for people to just assume that Judith is younger. It's so common amongst actors to be like, I am over 18, hire me. Like you don't really know their ages. You can sometimes visually tell. Jackson from Hannah Montana looking at you, you were certainly not 16, but for whatever reason, they were trying to spur that growth of Judith. 
By the time everything was said and done and she was taken from the earth, she'd been in 72 commercials and she'd been in a Jaws movie and my favorite movie on the planet when I was little. Not anymore. The Land Before Time. Long ago, five friends took an incredible journey through a land of danger. Land Before Time. She played Ducky. I was fucking obsessed with Ducky when I was little. I thought she was so cute. Yep, yep, yep. At her height, Judith was making about 100000 a year back in what? The early to mid 80s, which equates to about a quarter million a year. So she was pretty good. And despite this, Joseph is just out hustling still. He doesn't, again, want to ride the coattails of his young daughter. But it was through Judith's paycheck that the family was able to afford a three bedroom home by the time Judith was just in fourth grade. I personally believe that everything really started to kind of show its ass after she went and filmed the movie Jaws. Essentially, what had happened was Joseph had been getting fairly... I keep saying emasculated, but really that's the best word to describe it. He was getting more and more emasculated by his daughter, who was far more successful, like clearly more successful than he ever hoped to be in America. And she was just kind of showing him up. Up until she went and filmed Jaws, she was just a happy, bubbly girl, full of life, just a normal little kid, according to her manager. But Joseph had been getting increasingly more abusive leading up to the filming. He already was not kind to Maria by all accounts and he had a history of being fairly gnarly toward Judith and just not a good parent because of his jealousy it just got the better of him and he would physically and verbally emotionally mentally abuse both Judith and Maria. Judith had gone to film the movie Jaws. By the time she came back, her manager said that there was a noticeable difference in Judith's general demeanor, her behavior. She was no longer the bubbly, happy little girl that her manager had become accustomed to. She was a lot more introverted and aware of what she was saying, how she was speaking. It just kind of seemed like she was walking on eggshells, like very clearly something emotionally was going on with Judith. It was later found out that behind the scenes, Joseph had been threatening Maria Maria and Judith and basically was like, if you don't come back after you film Jaws, I will do horrible, horrible things to you. In fact, a relative of Maria's had actually died in Hungary and Joseph was so hesitant to have Judith and Maria leave that he didn't even tell Maria that a member passed so she wasn't able to go to the funeral. Things were just coming to a head. He was getting incredibly paranoid and controlling. Obviously, this abuse is not doing anything productive for Judith's mental health. And she started picking at her eyebrows and eyelashes just as a stress response and one of those anxiety responses. She also started abusing the family cat and picking its whiskers out as well because the physical violence around the house due to Joe's alcoholism was just becoming so overbearing and she did not know how to cope. Not saying that that's a good response, but I'm just saying she's a kid who's being abused from both her mom and her dad. Like she is not being taken care of as she should be. And it shows. Things had escalated to the point of physical violence where if Judith had stepped a little tootsie out of line, she would get pots hurled at her in a drunken fit by her father. Even leading to nosebleeds from getting hit in the face by this cookware. Joseph really wasn't hiding his resentment and aggression toward his wife and daughter too, because he had been threatening that if Maria left him due to the abuse, due to another man, like for whatever reason, if Maria left, he would kill her. And so his friend's like, okay, well that would leave your daughter alone. What are you gonna do? And he said, oh, I'll just have to kill her too. Not a thought, nary a care in the world. He's just going to take them both out and then continue along his life, apparently, as according to his friend. Joseph kind of seemed a little prone to the whole abuse love bomb cycle that's so common in abusive relationships. For example, he would buy Judith like kites or bikes or in one specific instance he bought her a little pink TV in order to apologize for pulling her hair. 
And the kite that I mentioned earlier, after he bought it for her, she pissed him off in some way, which seemed very easy to do. And so he took it outside and destroyed it. It was very much, I'm going to give you this present and you can keep it if you're nice to me. But if you're not, I will burn it in front of you and watch your tears. The May prior to the murders, Judith's manager had gone to CPS because enough was enough. She had started witnessing the abuse herself. And so she went to CPS in order to try and save Judith. She straight up offered to adopt Judith to both Joe and Maria. But they were like, that's my cash cow, bitch. Get out of here. They would not give her up despite the copious amounts of abuse and clearly traumatic situation for a child to be in. They said no. And about a week after the CPS case was created by the manager, it was shut down by Maria. One of the caseworkers who was quoted after the deaths was quoted as saying, quote, It's frightening because it appears that people on the outside took the right steps and we didn't manage it, unquote. Sorry, I said quote about 20 times. Take a shot every time I say quote and you'll be dead in about five minutes. At some point, it seems like Joseph was maybe trying to get it together. He ended up quitting alcohol and trying to get it together. Although, I mean, arguably that could have been another abuse tactic. Who really knows? Because it didn't last long enough to find out if it would stick. But he was really pissed off because after a week of being nice, Maria's like, "Uh, no, I don't forgive you. And he's like, why not? And would just get really upset with her for not being cool with him, just suddenly stopping drinking and hitting her for a week. Joe really started to fly off of the deep end and would start to, like I said, threaten his wife in front of his friends or to his friends. But he had some backup plans. He was thinking essentially that he would kill either Maria or Judith just to leave the other one to quote unquote suffer without their mother or daughter, depending on who he decided to murder that day. And he began to view his daughter as just the spoiled, selfish little brat who didn't share her toys and didn't act right as if that's her fucking fault or problem, considering she's being raised like that. And also she's the one supplying you with a quarter million a year, so shut the fuck up. And eventually Joe said, this tears it. And he went out and got a mistress and started just love bombing her and showering her with as much jewelry and money and just nice shit that he could afford. And Judith started freaking out. Like she didn't want to be at home. She was quoted as saying, quote, I'm afraid to go home. My daddy is miserable. My daddy is drunk every day. And I know he wants to kill my mother, unquote. Judith was fully aware of the stress of the house and was acting out like, duh, no shit she's acting out. She's scared. Things got so bad for Judith that in the May before her murder, she was supposed to be auditioning for a musical, but she literally could not get through it. She was crying so hard and was just so distraught from all of the abuse at home. At this point, her manager took the opportunity to again step in. This is about the same time that she lodged that report with CPS. So she's really, really trying to help Judith at this point because she can clearly see that the little girl is not okay. Basically, what ended up happening is her manager found a therapist for Judith. She went, she told them everything and basically ratted both her parents out as she should. And because therapists are mandated reporters, of course they went to CPS immediately and said, um, hi, I think you should look into this. CPS then gets involved again. And then they followed up with Maria and Maria was like, oh yeah, we have an escape plan. It's fine. I'm using my daughter's money to get us an apartment so we can get out. It's all good, dude. We're going to be out soon. Don't you worry your pretty little heads. I mean, it technically wasn't a lie. She really did go and get an apartment, but she would only stay there during the day. And then at night, she would bring Judith back home to sleep next to her alcoholic, abusive husband and father. I really don't want to sound like I'm judging or victim blaming. I do understand, like I've seen it firsthand. It's hard almost impossible to leave a violent, abusive household. It doesn't matter how much money you have. When you're so indoctrinated into the abuse, it does seem impossible. So I don't blame Maria for staying. I just wish that she had allowed Judith to go with the manager until Maria was in a safe space. That's the biggest thing where I'm like, why didn't you do that? But I mean, I've never been a battered woman with a child. I can't really speak on it. 
But if someone has an opinion, please share it in the comments. What would it take for you to allow someone else to care for your child while you tried to get yourself safe? Is that something that as a parent you would ever consider? Let me know because I don't have kids. That's a perspective that I hope to never understand and I hope no one else ever does have to understand it. But for the people who have understood it and been there, if you wouldn't mind sharing your perspective on everything. In my personal opinion, Joe found out the top three things that caused everything to blow up in such a catastrophic way. He found out that Maria was planning to divorce him. He found out that she had gotten an apartment and was intending to move out without him. And then he also found out that Judith was going to a therapist and trying to get some help for the trauma that she was enduring. So because of these major three factors, on Monday, July 25th, it was very clear that something was wrong. Judith was supposed to go to an appointment at Hanna-Barbera Productions, but she and her mother never ended up showing. There'd been a rumor swirling around that Joe had picked up the ladies and brought them to San Diego. So initially everyone was like, okay, maybe, like maybe it was just an impromptu family vacay, who knows? But after four days total went unaccounted for, finally investigators were involved. They showed up at the Barcy home on Wednesday, July 27th and found the three bodies of Joseph, Maria, and Judith all dead. It was fairly clear that Joseph had murdered both his daughter and his wife and then taken his own life. And there was gasoline spilled throughout the house some parts were burnt, some parts weren't. So it seems like there was an unsuccessful bid to burn the house down with their bodies in it. I don't know if it was to cover the crime scene. I don't, probably. But it didn't work. So the bodies were pretty easily recovered. Judith was found in her canopy bed. Her mother was found in her bed. And then Joseph was found in the garage surrounded by the gasoline, which I assume he probably assumed that it would have reached him by the time he was dead, but it didn't. So the poor manager after this situation was discovered was smacked in the face with the realization and memory that Joe, the last thing he said to her was, you know what? I've decided I'm going to go ahead and move out of the house. I just need to go say goodbye to my little girl. And that was the last thing that anybody heard from him outside of the family home. Judith's final role was in All Dogs Go to Heaven as Anne Marie, which ended up being released after her death. Now you, you go to sleep, huh? Charlie, will I ever see you again? Sure. Sure you will, kid. You know, goodbyes aren't forever. Then, goodbye, Charlie. I know that one was super heavy. There was a lot that was talked about. And thank you so much if you stuck in this long. If you guys have any cases in specific that you'd like me to cover, feel free to slide in the DMs or leave a comment below or follow me on Instagram at Creeps and Creeps Podcast and comment on the related Instagram post and uh, hopefully I'll be able to get to it. If you're ever curious about the sources, I'll put it in the blog post that's related to this episode on my website at creepsandcreeps.com. If you guys like this episode, please feel free to subscribe, leave a like, all that jazz, and otherwise, just keep your little noggins on a swivel. Please, please, please be safe out there. Seek out assistance if that's what you need, because we need you here. We love you. I don't even know you, but guess what? You got a soft spot in my little heart, so love you. Hopefully we'll see you again soon. Doodaloo.